Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to learn about another stage in aggregation pipeline called as the bucket stage. The bucket stage in MongoDB's aggregation pipeline is used to group input documents into buckets based on a specified expression and range boundaries. This stage is particularly useful for creating histograms and other statistical visualizations. Let's try to understand bucket stage with an example. So let's say what I want is, first of all, what I'm going to do is on the employees collection, I'm going to use aggregation pipeline. So for that, we can use this aggregate method and it should be aggregate. And to this, let's pass an array where we are going to specify the pipelines. So first of all, I am going to use the project stage. So let's use dollar project for that. And in here, what I want to project, first of all, I want to exclude the underscore ID field and I want to project name. So in our case, we have first name and last name. So I want to project first name and I want to project the birth year. So in the employee documents, we have a date of birth field. And from that date of birth field, I want to extract the birth year. Now in our documents, the date of birth field is stored as a string value. So first of all, we need to convert it to date type so that from that date, we can extract the birth year. So here I'm going to create a new field. I'll simply call it as birth year. Okay. And from here, what I'm going to do, I want to extract the birth year. So for that, I'm going to use dollar ISO week year. And this ISO week year, it can be applied on a date field. But currently, the date which we are storing in the document, it is a string value. So first, we are also going to convert that string value to date type. And for that, I'm going to use to date operator. And to this, we are going to specify the field name, which is storing the date of birth. In our case, it is DOB. And since I'm specifying the field name in the double quotes, I'm using this dollar before it. So in the result, we are going to have the first name field and the birth here. If I go ahead and if I run this command, let's see how the result will look like. If I press enter, you see in the result, we have first name and birth year, which is storing the birth year of each of the employees. Now, let's say I want to group the result using that birth year. So for that, what I can do, I can use another stage called group. And in there, first of all, we are going to specify the underscore ID field to that. We are going to assign a document. And here, first we will specify based on which field do we want to group the documents. And also we need to wrap it within curly braces like this. So here I want to group the documents based on this birth year field, basically this birth year field. So let me first go ahead and let me specify a name for the field. I'll simply call it as year. And which field are we going to use for grouping? The birth year field. And this birth year field, it is present in the result of this stage, this project stage. And then I also want the total number of employees who have been born in that birth year. So I'm creating another field called total. Here I'm going to use an accumulator operator called sum. And to this, I'm going to assign one. So we have already seen this in our previous lectures. So now let me copy this command. Let me clear the shell here and let's paste that command. And if I press enter in the result, you will see the birth here. So in this case, 1998 and total number of employees who were born in that birth year is one. Okay. In the same way for 1999 also, it is one for 1995. Also, it is one. Let me also go ahead and let me sort based on this total field. So for that, we can use another stage, which is dollar sort. And here we want to sort based on total field. And I want to sort in descending order. So that's why I'm assigning minus one. Let's copy this. Let me clear the shell. Let's paste it here. And if I press enter. So now the result is sorted in descending order. So for each year, we have one employee that is born in that year. 
So using group by, we can group documents together using a single value. For example, here we are grouping for this value 2008. So total number of employees is one. We are grouping using this year 2011. Total number of employees born in that year is again one. And then we are grouping with this value 2012. And the total number of employees born in that year is also one. But now let's say our requirement is instead of a single birth year, we want to find how many employees were born in a given range of birth years. For example, how many employees were born from year 1990 to 1999. So here we have a range of years 1990 to 1999. So that we want to calculate and that we can do using bucket stage. So now instead of using group stage here, I'm going to use bucket stage and for that we can use dollar bucket. Okay. In here, we have to specify few properties. For example, we need to specify using which field we want to group the documents. In this case, I want to group the documents again using birth year field. Okay. Then we also need to specify the range. And for the range, we need to specify another property called boundaries. And this is going to be an array. And in this array, we are going to specify the boundaries. So for example, I'm going to specify the boundaries as 1960, 1970, 1980, 1990, 2000, and 2010. And let's also say 2020. So now I want to group the documents using this range. I want to group the documents for the employees who were born in year 1960 to 1969. Then I want to group the employees who were born in 1970 to 1979. Then I want to group the employees who were born in 1980 to 1989 and so on. Okay, so here we are specifying the range using which we want to group the documents. Next, we also need to specify what are the fields we want in the output. So for that, we have another property called output. In this, we are going to specify how the results should look like. So what I want is first, I want to have a name field which should store the first name of all the employees who were born in a given range of years. For example, who were born in year 1962-1969. So this is going to be an array which is going to store the name of all the employees who were born in a given range. And since it is going to be an array, what we are going to do is from each document, we are going to pick the first name and we are going to push it in this name array. So for that, I'm also going to use dollar push operator. And what do we want to push? We want to push the first name of the employee. Okay. Then I also want the total number of employees who were born in that year range. So I'm going to call it as total. And to get this total again, we are going to use this accumulator operator called sum and to that I'm going to assign one. And finally, I'm also going to calculate the average age. So let me create a field called average age. Now in our documents, we don't have the age field. So here we are going to calculate the age. Now, how are we going to calculate the age? Well, I'm going to keep things simple. So first of all, to calculate the age, we are going to use this accumulator operator called dollar age to that we need to assign the age value and we are going to calculate the age value so what we are going to do is from the current year we are going to subtract the birth year in order to calculate the age okay now this is not the right way to calculate the age but still to keep things simple i am using this approach so to subtract one value from another value we can use this subtract operator to this we need to assign an array in this array i'm going to specify the current year which is 2025 and i'm going to subtract the birth year of the employee so we are storing the birth year of the employee in the dollar birth year field right so we are subtracting the birth year of the employee from the current year and then we are calculating the average age so all the employees who were born in a given year range for example let's say 1960 to 1969 this 
dollar age is going to calculate the average age of all those employees let me go ahead and let me copy this command let me clear this shell here let's paste the command which we have just copied and if i press enter here we have an error and it says unrecognized option to bucket i think it should be boundaries da let me copy this again let's clear the shell let's paste the command one more time and now if i press enter okay now we have the error here okay it should be average and not age so we want to calculate the average age so for that the accumulator function is avg so that was my mistake let's copy this again and let's paste it one more time let's press enter now we have another error and it says this subtract takes exactly two arguments but we have passed one so to this dollar subtract we are passing 2025 okay it should not be minus it should be comma all right let me copy it one more time let's clear the shell let's paste the command one more time and hopefully this time it should work so now you can see it is working now so for the first range so first range we have specified as 1960 to 1969 so how it works is it takes the value as the starting range and from the next value it subtracts one and it takes that value as in range so here these are the employees who were born between 1980 to 1989 and there are no employees who were born between 1960 to 1969 that's why for that we don't have any result here in the same way there are no employees who were born in 1970 to 1979 so for that also we don't have any document in the return result but we do have some employees who are born between 1980 to 1989 so total eight employees are there and you can see the average age then we also have employees who are born between 1990 to 1999 so total 11 employees were born between year 1990 to 1999 so for that also you can see the result for the employees born between 2000 to 2009 also you can see the result employees born between 2010 to 2019 for that also you can see the result okay so using bucket stage we can group the documents together based on a range of values and this is the difference between bucket stage and group stage now we also have another stage like bucket and that is called as bucket auto what bucket auto does is it calculates the range automatically so you don't have to specify the range explicitly it will calculate the range based on how many range do you want to create so you need to pass the number of range which you want to create and based on that bucket auto will automatically calculate the range let me also show you that so let's copy this command and let me paste it here now instead of bucket we are going to use bucket auto this time since we are using bucket auto we don't need to specify the boundaries so let me remove this here we need to specify number of buckets number of range which we want to create so for that we can simply say buckets and here i'm going to pass the range as five i mean the number of buckets which we want to create is five and rest other things should be same so here as you can see we are not specifying the range like we were doing for the bucket stage instead here we are specifying the number of range which we want to create and this bucket auto will automatically create a range based on the value which we are passing here so let me go ahead and let me copy this command let's clear the shell first let's paste the command and now when i press enter you can see it has again grouped the documents based on a given range for example for the first document the range is between 1983 to 1989 okay so in that range total seven employees were born and this is the average age then the second range is between 1989 to 1997 so in that year range eight employees were born and this is the average age 
the third range is 1997 to 2003. So in this way, this bucket auto has calculated the range automatically, the boundaries automatically. Here, we just need to specify by which field do we want to group and what should be the total number of buckets, the total number of range. So here you can see we have total five range. This is the first range. This is the second range. This is the third range. This is the fourth range and this is the fifth range. So when you want to group documents together based on a single value, you can use group stage. But when you want to group documents together based on a range of values, in that case, you can use bucket stage or bucket auto stage. So you can use bucket auto stage when you want MongoDB to calculate the range instead of you specifying the range, the boundaries. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.